I'm Kathleen Krug. I'm going to do a book review for you today. And today's book is The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, The Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity. Now this was first published in 1992 and this is her new um, publication with a new introduction in 2002, or 10, 10 years later. Now, this, this is designed to be a class, a course in discovering and recovering your creative self. And your creative self is not just if you're a literal artist, um, whether it's music or painting or sculpture or writing. It's also your creative self in life, anywhere. Um, doing blogging, <laughs> doing marketing, in your business, anything in your business, you need some creativity and you need to be able to access that and open yourself up to your thoughts and your dreams for your life and all your goals. And this book helps do it. This is a 12-week um, course, actually, and what they encourage is not so much one-on-one -on -one doing it by yourself, but doing it with a group of people. So it's 12 weeks, so it's once a week, you meet for um, two or three hours, preferably, and you go over the work, and she's got assignments in there, she has things to think about, and um, really brings out a lot of stuff from, you know, asking questions from your childhood, and this and that, and the other thing, a bunch of different stuff, and you can pick and choose how many you want to do, and what you want to do. Now, her basic tools in this book are the morning pages, and an artist date, and the morning pages is basically journaling, and I know that scares a lot of people, a lot of people don't like that, but that's probably the best reason to do it because if you don't like it or it does scare you, maybe you're afraid of bringing out something that you don't want to deal with right now. But what you do is you commit yourself to writing three pages a day, every single day. It's non-negotiable. And whether it takes you five minutes to do it or an hour to do it, three, three pages. And what you do is you don't have to try to think of stuff. You don't have to be creative. You just write what's on your mind, what's on your heart. <clears throat> the best time for me to do it was waking up first thing in the morning and doing it. Sometimes these three pages turned into an hour of 20 pages. Sometimes these three pages took forever. And sometimes I only got through a page and a half. And it's, you know, you might just write your gripes and everything down for the day. If you're feeling lousy things are going on that are bugging you, you can write down all that. If you just get up and write down the things you did yesterday, start there. And it just kind of mushrooms from there and rolls from there. And you can end up with some real creative stuff. You can end up with stuff that's just mundane. And no one's going to read these. Nobody's going to read them. You're not even going to read them for at least eight weeks. So you write them down, you forget them, and you don't go back to it for a couple of months as you're going through this course. The next thing is the artist date, and the artist date is a lot of fun. That's my favorite part. Um, some people have a hard time with that. It's spending time by yourself and learning how to spend time by yourself so you can access the things that you love, maybe the things you had forgotten about that you loved during your childhood, the things you used to do. Um, you can go to a walk in the park. I'm at the park today. You can walk in the park. You can sit there, you know, read. Walk your dog, go to the museum, go for a swim, um, take a pottery class, do some painting, try to do some writing if you enjoy doing that. There's a lot of different things you can do for an artist day. The only rule is you do it by yourself. Just you, yourself, and you. You don't take kids, you don't take your loved ones, you don't take your, of course, your loved ones or your kids. <laughs> you don't take your, ha your um, spouse or anybody else or your best friend. It's just for you. If you're going to a craft show, whatever it is that you like to do. And I want to read you a couple excerpts from this book. And she's got rules of the road. I'll just read you a few of these. She has ten. In order to be an artist, I must show up at the page. Use the page to rest, to dream, to try. Number two, fill the well by caring for my artist. There's your artist face. Set small and gentle goals and meet them. No one's asking you to, you know, eat the whole elephant one bite at a time. You've heard that one before, I'm sure. Pray for guidance, courage, and humi humility. Remember that it is far harder and more painful to be a blocked artist than it is to do the work. And we all know that. We always put the things that we don't want to do last. 
and it's, it's so hard that if you just got them done first thing, they'd be out of swing and feel so much better and we'd have a very productive day. Remember that it is not my job to judge the work, it is my job to do the work. So it's very non-judgmental, you're excavating yourself, trying to find out, you know, what you love and find these lost things. Um, and like I said, it goes week by week. Here's week seven, recovering a sense of connection. This is talking about listening. I'm going to read a part of a page out of here. The ability to listen is a skill we are honing with both our morning pages and our artist dates because we're listening to us inside. The pages train us to hear past our sensor, you know, the sensor that says, you're stupid, you can't do that, you're not smart enough, you're not creative enough, you don't have the time, what are you thinking, you don't have the money. we got to get past that person, that gatekeeper, that sensor. The artist dates help us to pick up on the voice of inspiration. What do I want to do? You know, if you love art, maybe you're going to an, a juried art show or, or a craft show or or art museum and you start to feel those stirring stir back up inside of you and want to get busy. While both of these activities are apparently unconnected to the actual act of making art, they are critical to the creative process. And I think you can see why. Because we've explained it. Art is not about thinking about something up. Art is not about thinking something up, trying to imagine it. It is about the opposite, about getting something down. The directions are important. If we are trying to think something up, we are straining to reach for something that is just beyond our grasp. It's up there in the stratosphere where art lives on high, somewhere way beyond us. When we get something down, there is no strain. We're not doing, we're getting. Someone or something else is doing the doing. Instead of reaching for invention, we are engaged in listening. Listening to what's going inside of us. And there's a lot of those insights in there. A lot. You know, some people go through these and after a few weeks, and you know, they get frustrated at the beginning, and after a few weeks, things start coming together a little bit and seeming a little easier to write down. Or you might get like a plateau and get stuck. You just work yourself through that and just write down what's going on through the day. A lot of people have found, have found, um, realize things that, oh, I used to love to write when I was school, and when I was in school, I used to love to draw when I was in school. Oh my gosh, I had tons of poems that I had stacked away somewhere, and they pulled those out again. So I would encourage you to get this book, The Artist's Way, A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity by Julia Cameron. And I will have a link down there to Amazon that you can pick that up. And there's a little piece of homework for you. Like she has priority. List for yourself your creative goals. We've all heard of our goals. Now we're going to list creative goals for the year. List yourself your creative goals for the month. And list yourself your creative goals for the week. Find what those are. Try to think about them a little bit. Pick a word for the year. A word that would describe what you want to be. Write that down. Maybe put some pictures together for it on um, like a mini vision board and have that in front of you so you think about it on the refrigerator in front of your desk wherever you go by often so you think about that a lot and what you start thinking about you start doing things about Hi, right, I'm Kathleen Cruz and I look forward to talking with you again have a great day bye bye